Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. This is where they are building I am, the I am going, I am in the recommended channel on Discord. Alright, and I'm picking. You guys said I don't. Well, you are proven. Where did I go? Wrong, my friend. Mm, like right there. Guys, I still have my Merry... Uh, just it... Why can't you wear a sweater just because it says Merry Christmas or it's not... It's the Mike Tyson Merry Christmas. All right. And it, it was a jumper that was right there. And all right, I'm ready. See, recommended. Uh, we went inside the largest nuclear fusion reactor. Yes, I know all about these. Shut it, you. I got cable in my room. So happy. For the first time in a long time. Okay. Uh, my name is Connor. Hello. I like to learn about things and watch stuff. Riveting, I know. Original link to the video, top of the description, right below that. Link to the Discord. Click on it. Send right over there. Love to have you. More the merrier. Pull up a chair. We are nice. Usually. Most of the time. Sometimes. Join. Let's go. This is where they are building the largest nuclear fusion reactor in the world. Right now, I am inside the assembly Wayne hall of the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor in the south of France. And just behind me back there is where scientists and engineers are working to replicate what happens inside the sun. Now, this is so much more than just another energy project. It's a $22 billion science experiment between a whole host of nations all coming together to try and change how we generate power on this planet. You guys oh, ever just... heard of a thing called a Dyson Sphere? No, not a Dyson Sphere. It's like a third, uh, like there, there's the planet dominating, then the solar system dominated, solar system, and then the and then the galaxy dominating civilization. I'm explaining this horribly. Hopefully some of you know what I'm talking about. To where there you can like put giant energy capping panels around the actual sun to like take energy from it. This mission to create a new carbon free energy source couldn't be more urgent. Global energy use is projected to nearly double by 2050 and we've got to drastically cut our use of fossil fuels. Some scientists hope that controlled nuclear fusion could be the holy grail of energy, but there's a catch. As it stands right now, no reactor has ever been able to produce more energy through nuclear fusion than it takes in. Lighters aiming to be the first. And what? Some scientists hope that controlled nuclear fusion could be the holy grail of energy, but there's a catch. As it stands right now, no reactor has ever been able to produce more energy through nuclear fusion than it takes in. Lighters aiming to be the first, and if it's a success, it could quite literally change the world. How is this different from a nuclear reactor? Uh Nuclear fusion, the energy which fires the hydrogen bomb and the sun. Could this be the pot of gold waiting at the end of the rainbow? To provide energy which is cheap, clean, and inexhaustible. In November 1985, General Secretary Gorbachev of the Soviet Union made a proposal to US President Ronald Reagan, form an international coalition to develop fusion energy for peaceful purposes. A year later, the EU, Japan, Soviet Union, and US all agreed to design a nuclear fusion facility called ITER. Today, that effort's grown to include thousands of engineers and scientists across 35 member nations. Scientists plan to use this 23,000 ton reactor to basically, in layman's terms, create a tiny star here on Earth that's then used to power the world. Now, if that sounds like a really big deal to you, it's because it is. 
The nuclear reactors you're probably familiar with use a process called fission, where atoms are split apart and energy is released in the form of heat and radiation. That's the same process that powers those terrible atomic bombs and the nuclear power plants we have today. It's driven by elements like uranium and plutonium, which can be hard to get hold of and end up as dangerous nuclear waste. Guys, one of the things I don't understand about nuclear fission those or, you know, bomb. Nu nuclear reactors is so you... You're probably familiar so you, with use a... Pr God, I'm going to pause. I have questions, all right? Get at uh, the original link to the video. If I get one more damn comment from you people saying, oh, I pause too much. If you enjoy the video, original link to it, top of the description, just go watch it. I, I don't mind, but I have questions. So, so it starts... Process called fission, where atoms are split apart. Right, and then these ones are... are directed into another uh nucleus and then and then those split into another but how do you get them so accurate like how how do you get it so calibrated to be accurate where you split one and then that splits and that splits another like four but how does it go so accurately into knowing you're going to hit the next two and then the next four and then the next eight and then the next 16 and energy is released in the form of heat and radiation. That's the same process that powers those terrible atomic bombs and the nuclear power plants we have today. It's driven by elements like uranium and plutonium, which can be hard to get hold of and end up as dangerous nuclear waste. Nuclear fusion, however, is the process by which atoms are fused together using elements that are abundant on Earth, like the hydrogen isotopes you can extract from water. Heat generated from nuclear fusion reactors can be used to produce steam that can power turbines and generators to create electricity. That's one another thing that I find interesting. So, almost any, any, most of all, you know, whether it be a, a coal or or a nuclear, it, it all has the purpose of heating up water, and then the steam is what does the job. Once you can do that, you kind of have an unlimited supply of carbon-free energy that isn't dictated by whether it's sunny or windy. The problem is, achieving efficient, scalable nuclear fusion here on Earth is still really hard to do. You need a machine that can withstand temperatures 10 times hotter than the core of the sun and twice the force required to launch a space shuttle. That's all to say this thing has to be really, really durable. And that's where the insane levels of concrete and engineering that you see going on here all come into play. 10 times hotter than the core Here's of the sun. how it'll work. Hydrogen atoms are injected into this vacuum vessel. Then a giant superconducting magnet around the machine is turned on, and the voltage strips the electrons from their atoms, forming something called plasma. It's a state of matter that's sort of like gas. Hopefully you're still with us. I am. Plasma is then heated to extreme temperatures of up to 150 million degrees Celsius. The atoms then fuse together and release a huge burst of thermal energy in the process. Sorry, what is that in Fahrenheit? So that is like 100 and... That's like 300... A little under 300 million degrees Fahrenheit. Yes. That nuclear reaction produces four times as much energy as nuclear fission, and four million times the amount of energy you can get from burning the same amount of coal, oil, or gas. The ITER Tokamak will be the largest and most powerful fusion device in the world, with one million components and ten million parts. Those parts are all made and assembled by ITER's member countries and then shipped here to this 445-acre site in France. It's kind of like building a Lego kit, just ten million times more complicated. I think France is so smart in this Ukrainian Russian, um, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and sanctions is all really showing how smart France was. And I saw that something like four, five percent, don't quote me on this, I'm a little bit off, of you, of uh, Germanic, Germanic, of Germany's, Deutschland, Germany's uh, energy, only five percent or something like that comes from nuclear power. And a huge thing I noticed driving through Europe with my dad and brother back like eight years ago, no, six years ago, six to eight, was all of the windmills, so many windmills. I didn't see so much solar stuff, but windmills can't produce enough nearly as much energy as fossil fuels and certainly not as much as uh, um, 
Let me know if I'm wrong, but it's pretty certain. And certainly not as much as uh, nuclear power. And France has something like 90% of their power, electricity, coming from nuclear power. And obviously the biggest thing against nuclear power is possibility of meltdowns and disposing of the nuclear waste, which can both be solved or contained with extremely professional uh, people working within, you know, not the 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 scrubs who are playing with the uh, Chernobyl, the idiots playing with the uh, Chernobyl thing. Um, idiots, I, I don't know. But um, why, why Germany? Why not move more into nuclear energy rather than solar and wind? I don't get it. Collect rickets so you and aren't, work as the deputy. Sorry, so you aren't reliant on Russian oil because Russian oil has to fill in what the what your wind farms and solar panels can't generate. Head of the Project Control Office for ITA organization. It's my job to make sure that all the bits that are needed to put together the Lego kit that is ITA show up on time, the right color, the right shape, the right time. I'm the grandmaster of the Lego kit. With so many heavy components needed to make the machine, 104 kilometers of roadway have been specially modified into something that's now known as the ITA itinerary. We've built bridges, we've widened roads, we have police convoys to get our components through. It's a massive undertaking just to move a component. Everything then comes here into the massive assembly hall. Parts are put together and these enormous cranes on the ceiling above my head lifted up and over into the reactor. At its core, we're still building the same facility we were building and was imagined decades ago. But of course, every week something changes because we're on a global platform. Pandemics, Brexit, political elections. So then we reschedule, we reorientate our program. I spend most of my time saying, well, that was the plan, but nothing goes to plan. And this is how we're going to adapt. Now, I'm a self-confessed construction geek, and ITA really is the ultimate construction project. If you thought getting one national government to build an infrastructure scheme was hard, try doing it with 35 nations, all with different languages, cultures, and building practices. It's a pretty nuclear level of project collaboration, and tools from Think Projects are helping to make it all happen. So it's the coming together of these nations who recognize that there's a problem with the environmental conditions, recognize the the potential of fusion to solve the baseload energy problem and are now working together to a few some people are just so smart humans are amazing i always say like you know what's your favorite animal my favorite animal is homo sapiens human beings i think that they are incredible i'm speaking like an alien <laughs> Um, just looking at complicated stuff like this, knowing like experience and brains had to go into all these little pipes and scaffoldings and wires, it just blows my mind. And I have so, I just proud fusion to solve the baseload energy problem, and are now working together in the most amazing collaborative way. I think there's something like 45 home native languages at the ETA head office. It's an amazing thing. Behind all the concrete, magnets and metal, there's a lot of different people building, shipping and assembling millions of specialised parts. And all those different people contributing to ITA need contracts to get paid and make sure their work is being accounted for. Think Project manages contracts for nearly 400 users across 30 organisations and those 35 nations. It's not the most glamorous part of the project, but it's the glue that kind of keeps the whole thing together. The stakes are high for ITA and staying organized is essential. There's been a lot of money invested in this and it's a crucial moment in our energy transition away from fossil fuels and towards renewable sources. The immense project is scheduled to first power on in 2025 when they'll hope to create plasma. Eventually, the goal is to create, at least for a few seconds, what scientists call net energy, where more energy is produced than used. 
Once that small task is done, the next challenge will be to actually funnel the energy made through fusion into our existing power grids. But that's still a couple of decades away and will likely be taken up by other reactors. ITER isn't the only group trying to harness the power of nuclear fusion. A growing number of coalitions and private companies are racing to figure out how to make fusion power commercially viable and competitive with the price of fossil fuels. The new US infrastructure bill has a number of provisions for nuclear energy research and production. Once someone cracks the code, commercially scalable carbon-free energy production would dramatically reduce the world's dependence on fossil fuels. But it'll take time, and lowering the costs of renewable energy when might mills. help us get there first. The possibility of a future that is good for our children and our children's children with a good standard of living demands fusion. There's no other solution. I just want to clarify what I, what I mean when I get upset or just kind of like, oh, uh, windmills, is that um, I think uh, the, the, um, the problem humanity is facing in climate change has, has unfortunately taken effect in, into like the political, cultural infighting. And then so people tend to not really... People who just don't know much about it, which, which I, I even don't know that much about global warming, just kind of like know the popular words and like, oh, global warming is so special. It's such an important. And then you ask him, okay, why? And what is, it's just like, uh, well, uh, well, well, uh, it's like a fashionable statement to say. And that's not to say it's not one of the biggest um, things we're facing, but don't carry it away and just think, oh, fossil fuels bad nuclear energy sounds dangerous windmills are nice and so let's make a bunch of windmills fine as you want to continue to improve the like i know there's a big battery issue when it comes to uh windmills and um solar like the 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 technology is not there yet although it's progressing to make um you know windmills and 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 solar power which are very reliant on good conditions to meet the full demand of energy uh, of our energy needs. And so I, I don't think you should get carried away and just exit out fossil fuels because fossil fuels, coal is, equals bad, wind equals good, nuclear, scary, and then just like blindly go into all renewable energies. I think that's not smart. Um... I think what France did is extremely intelligent. They, they, they weren't so wrapped into the kind of like um, trends of today like I think Germany is. And then boom, Russia, hostile nation, more hostile than ever, uh, invading a sovereign country. And now you're hesitant about sanctions, which will help Russia crush Ukraine. And it's like France doesn't have your problem, Germany. And I have a lot of German viewers, so I'm not, I, I love you guys. Uh, but um, try, try to take it easy with all of the windmills and stuff right now, is my opinion. Um, keep a little fossil fuel production. Keep a lot of nuclear. And, uh, yeah. Standing here at the very center of this reactor that could quite literally change the world is a really powerful reminder of just how impactful the construction industry can be. You know, none of this would be possible without the sector that so many of you work to create every day. Yeah, the spot where I'm currently standing in decades to come could be seen as the birthplace of a new kind of energy on this planet. I'm not sure it gets cooler than that. This video was made possible by Think Projects. You can learn more about that at the link below. And as always, guys, if you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, the in. channel that takes you inside the very heart of a nuclear reactor, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M. Ooh. I don't know why he said Wayne Rooney. He doesn't even look like him. Awesome video. Love it. B1M. Yeah, I hope I didn't sound too stupid. I just want you guys to know, I'm not coming trying to educate people. I, I like to learn and speak my mind. So I'm not going to be offended if you say my stuff is nonsensical and you give a, a good rebuttal. I love it. Hope you're all doing well. If not, chin up, my friend. You'll be good soon. Don't worry. Smile. Get up straight. Deep breath. You're going to be fine.
Okay? Whatever you're going through, you're going to be okay. Bye, guys.